Welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. If you like the videos, please subscribe. If you'd like to be notified every time a new video comes out, hit that bell icon. And now let's go see the Tired Old Queen at the Movies, Steve Hayes. Once I had a secret job. No, then. Come in. Oh, Johnny, I thought we'd do one of my favorites from the 50s, 1957's The Pajama Game. Directed by Sidney Donnan and George Abbott and starring Doris Day, John Raitt, Carol Haney, Retta Shaw, and Eddie Foy Jr. With music by Richard Adler and Jerry Ross, who also wrote Damn Yankees, this musical and Damn Yankees were bought by Jack Warner in the 50s, and he was so sure they were going to be big hits, he brought along George Abbott, added Stanley Donnan into the mix to direct it, and took many of the original Broadway cast and put them into the movies. This very seldom happens that anybody who did the Broadway show gets to do the movie version of the musical. Now, originally, <laughs> George Abbott wanted Marlon Brando to play the lead, but he was out. So they cast Frank Sinatra and Janice Page. Well, then Frank Sinatra pulled out. And they needed a star, so that made room for Doris Day, and that got John Ray into the mix. So this is the committee. That's right, Mr. Sorokin. This is the committee. Doris was having a really good time in her career. This was around the same time as Love Me or Leave Me. Love me or leave me. And Calamity Jane. What? I had a secret love. Oh, all of them! Ooh. The plot is basically this. This new guy is brought in as a foreman and he falls in love with one of the women there who's in charge of the grievance committee because they're trying to get a seven and a half cent raise every year. I beg your pardon? Seven and a half cents! That's what they want now! The musical numbers in this are exuberant and fun and just so lovely. Hey There, that song, that love song, Hey There. Hey There. Hernando's Hideaway. Three times and this below. Seven and a half cents. That's enough for me to be living like the king. Steam Heat, they all were like great big hits and all choreographed by Bob Fosse. Bob Fosse was friends with Carol Haney. Carol Haney was a great Broadway dancer. She was amazing. She went to Hollywood and became friends with Jack Cole. Jack Cole was the one who was the confidant and choreographer for Marilyn Monroe. He did all of her shows. He was a great, great choreographer. He hooked her up with Gene Kelly and Carol Haney was his assistant on some of Gene Kelly's most famous hits on American in Paris, uh, Singing in the Rain, On the Town. She worked with him. Well then through that she got hooked up with Bob Fosse and Bob Fosse adored her and she was great at, with Fosse choreography. <laughs> He was always trying to get her a part, a better part. They cast her in a smaller part in Pajama Game, and George Abbott loved her so much he, because he wrote the book, he beefed up her part, and she ended up winning a Tony Award for Best Supporting Actress for Pajama Game. This movie also has Eddie Foy Jr., who came from The Foys, the fabulous Foys from Vaudeville, and Retta Shaw, who is one of my favorite, favorite character actresses. She was in everything. She was also in Picnic, and she got to do both Picnic and Pajama Game around the same time. She's in Mary Poppins. She's got white hair and sort of a big, blustery kind of lady. And she got an Emmy nomination in The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, the TV version with Hope Lang for playing the housekeeper. She's just absolutely wonderful. Haney was just exuberant. There's a very famous story around her. She was out one night during the Broadway run of Pajama Game and her understudy took over. And in the audience that night was Hal Wallace, the great Hollywood producer. And he became enchanted with the girl who replaced her that night, her understudy and went backstage and signed her to a contract and Shirley MacLaine's career was born. This has always been one of the great Hollywood stories, how the understudy takes over the role. And, you know, it's like all about Eve, but it really, you know, this really happened, you know, but she wasn't like that. Shirley wasn't like Eve Harrington, but it was that typical th sort of thing where the understudy shines and gets signed up. <laughs> Doris from this went on to do Pillow Talk with Rock Hudson and her whole career changed 
But during this time at Warner Brothers, she had a good career. She was the closest Warners got to Judy Garland. I figured it out. She figured it out. And she carried them right through to the 50s. She very seldom complained. She just did her work. She had a big recording career at this particular time. I, I heard her <laughs> interviewed, but she was she very seldom came out. She was kind of reclusive in her 90s. And and Jonathan Schwartz was interviewing her <laughs> and I heard, and he said, hey God, you know, they've just released this whole thing of 50 sh hits from you. And do you want to hear some of them? And she said, oh no. And they, he said, why not? She said, oh, I had to sing so much garbage back then. My husband would sign me up to sing these really stupid songs and I just hated them. And every time I hear myself sing, I think, oh, I should I should have done better on that. I wish I had hit that note. Oh God, I wasn't very good. No, no. She said, that's all over. I don't need to hear those ever again. <laughs> you know, I, I thought, wow, that's great. I happen to think there are certain things a person has to stand for in this life. John Ray, woof. I think he's simply woo woo, don't you? Oh. John Ray was a musical comedy star on Broadway. He was the original Billy Bigelow in Carousel. Later he did productions of Oklahoma. He did Annie Get Your Gun on the Road with Mary Martin. He had a big career and he was a hunk. They got him to take his shirt off <laughs> at one point in Pajama Game in the movie and you go, oh my God. You know, he was really a hunk, but the camera wasn't wild about him. And for some reason, this was the one movie that he really got. Been knocking himself out to be a dandy fella, but he can't make a score. So he just went back to Broadway and continually worked, recorded. He was put in the Broadway Hall of Fame. He, you know, he was, he, he gained fame like that. <laughs> this is my once a year day. Pajama Game was a big hit, and I think one of the reasons is it's quintessential 50s. When they do Hernando's Hideaway, Carol Haney introduces that, you know that song, I know a dark, secluded place. A place where no one knows your face. You know, it just goes on, and you find yourself, that's gonna be in your head for a long time. In that number, in that number, is a little guy who comes on every once in a while and calls his girlfriend's name. Oopsie, oopsie. And this guy was Harvey Evans. And Harvey Evans was a neighbor of mine and he was one of the original guys in the movie version of West Side Story. He was in Follies. He was in everything. And he, he just passed away this past year and he was one of the sweetest, kindest men around and I just adored him and he did so much he was in New Girl in Town with Thelma Ritter and Gwen Verdon he just had a great career I, I just love seeing him all of a sudden that little face comes up and it's him and it, it makes me so happy this movie makes me so happy it's got such a good attitude and it's got such a it's it's 50s kind of lightweight musical fluff and it's just happy <laughs> So, <laughs> turn on your happy face and watch Doris Day, John Raitt, Carol Haney, Eddie Foy Jr., and Harvey Evans and Rita Shaw in George Abbott and Stanley Donen's The Pajama Game. <gasps> hey there, you with the stars in your eyes. Let's all go to the lobby. Shh, I know. A dark, secluded place. A place. Where no one knows your face. That's bossy choreography, and that's the best I can do. The popcorn can't be beat.